Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about bike geometry, adjustable geo, and why that matters to you. We get a lot of questions about people asking what bike's the right one for them. Uh, a lot of folks think that longer and slacker has got to be the best because that's what they hear everyone talking about. And today we're going to walk you through our beautiful test model here, which is the Specialized Levo. We thought that was a great example because it doesn't just employ adjustable geo thanks to a flip chip out back, but there are some very cool headset adjustments you can make here with the plus or minus one degree cup. And we're going to sort of walk you through the concept and theory of why you might want to adjust your geometry and what that will mean for you in terms of performance, safety, and all around fun out on the trail. So when it comes to bike geometry, um, we'll link to a video that we made down below. Uh, we think we called it Bike Geometry 101. Um, there's a lot of things to consider and look at and the bike is a, a system, right? Everything works together. So you can't just look at one number on a bike and compare it to another number on that bike without taking a look at the rest of the, the measurements and the geometry to kind of give you a better picture of how the bike rides overall. And again, one of the reasons that we chose the Specialized Levo is because one, it's a bike that we absolutely love in the stock geo setting, but we also love the fact that it allows you to adjust the geometry in such a wide range based on what you want out of the bike. Now, this is kind of your little packet uh, or package, I should say, that you get with your bike, manual charger, etc. But what's in here is this adjustable headset cup. And you'll see there is a plus or minus one degree setting. The nominal or center setting is what comes in the bike factory and gives the bike a 64 and a half degree head tube angle. And before we really start getting into too many of the adjustments, um, I just want to mention briefly that this bike's a size S4. I'm five foot 11 um, and Specialized and many other brands now are starting to run a reach or style based sizing, which really is focusing more on the, the reach dimension, right? They're trying to keep the head tube heights low, seat tube heights low. That way riders in different areas uh, and riding styles can select a bike based on their intended uh, or I should say desired feel out on the trail, right? So in theory, at 5'11", I could ride an S3, which I have. I also could ride an S5, which I have. Um, I feel the S5, some guys, you know, that maybe just ride big, swoopy, high-speed flow and jump trails will like because of that increased length and stability. Whereas some places I've ridden, uh, maybe like Phoenix or some of those real tight techie spots, that S3 size is pretty enjoyable because it allows a bike to be shorter, more snappy, and more playful. For me, the S4 is a pretty solid blend. 475 reach, it, it kind of hovers plus or minus depending on all these settings, but um, it's a pretty dialed spot for me and for my riding. A uh, 64 and a half degree head tube angle is the stock setting. Now, a 64 and a half degree head tube angle, I would say for a aggressive trail to, you know, maybe a lighter duty enduro bike is going to give you a pretty solid all around feel. Again, reach has to do with it, stack height has to, there's a lot of other things that go into not just the number being 64 and a half, but essentially what a head tube angle means is that if you're, you know, you're looking at a bike from the side, a profile shot, that head tube angle being steeper or slacker is going to change how fast and twitchy the bike handles versus how stable and planted it feels at higher speeds or going down really steep terrain. Now there is a downside, right? Like you might be thinking, oh, well, the more stable and safe and, and predictable can never be a bad thing, but that's incorrect because if you live in an area that's maybe very flat, um, you're falling off of lots of low speed drops or you're climbing or descending very tight switchbacks, right? If you're in an area where you ride a lot of hiking trail or multi-use trails that's, that are old, you're not gonna want a really long or really slack bike because it makes your bike super long. Uh, when you're trying to climb, that front end's just gonna feel kind of chopperish. It'll be harder to weight that front end. And so that's where maybe even going to the you know, changing that, that head tube angle from the 64 and a half to 65 and a half might be a beneficial set for you. Now I realize not all bikes come with a headset cup. Um, 
it's a really neat feature, I think, and, and when brands do it well, it is definitely an asset. Adjustable headset cups aren't quite as common, though more brands are starting to do them. And this is a change that's actually easier to do on the ground than on a work stand. So you don't even have to worry about having tons of tools or, or a shop. You can do this out on the trail. Um, you're gonna simply remove your star nut, your top cap there, loosen your stem bolts. You're gonna pull the stem out or off of your steer tube, I should say. And then from there, you're just going to pull your steer tube spacers out and then get that cup and pull it out. From there, you're gonna get your new headset cup and then depending on if you wanna go uh, st steeper or slacker by one degree, you can put that cup in there as well. Simply replace the bearings, reinstall your uh, dust protector little top cap there and get your steer tube spacers back reinstall the stem and you've just made a huge difference to your bike. Now that's where we kind of move to the back of the bike, which most mountain bikes these days do have, uh, you can call it a flip chip or an adjustable geo chip, whatever every brand or you want to call it. But back here is where essentially you can change usually bikes into a high or low position or long and short. Um, you know, there's a few different ways that, that brands utilize that chip to change the bike. What that also does though, in raising or lowering the BB or changing the rear end is it does make uh, roughly half a degree adjustment on this particular bike. Um, and I'd say a lot of other bikes as well. So you can kind of fine tune where you want that to be. So while head tube angle is going to be something that really helps with uh, stability or nimbleness, bottom bracket height and chainstay wheelbase overall, right, uh, rear center lengths are going to also be elements that contribute to how the bike rides overall. Now a lower center of gravity is going to create more stability. It's um, in, in certain instances gonna make the bike corner and feel better in the turns, right? I mean, it, you've probably all been behind a really tall, skinny vehicle versus a low sports car, right? You can see a difference. Of course, if you were to go out and watch some four x four vehicles rock crawling, you're not gonna see a low rider out there, right? You're gonna want vehicles that are high and raised off the ground. And that's where the longer, lower slacker thing isn't always the best, right? If you are in Palm Springs, uh, if you're in Phoenix, if you're, I guess, generally in the Southwest, or even if you like technical climbing um, in a rocky, rooty area, like in the Pacific Northwest or the East Coast, where there's a lot of rocks, you don't want the lowest bike out there because you won't be able to pedal over half of the trails or obstacles on the trails because they are pretty tall. So that's where having a little bit higher bottom bracket is gonna come into play because it'll allow you to pedal and clear stuff more easily. And then similarly, when you're descending, you know, if you come out of a corner and you wanna get a pedal stroke or two in, you're not gonna be at risk or as worried about clipping a pedal, stubbing a toe and getting ejected off your bike, which, you know, is stuff that we have done and it sucks. So, so another thing to consider in that handling formula is going to be that rear center length, the chainstay length, whatever you prefer, which is essentially from the center of the bottom bracket to the center of the rear axle. With this bike changing uh, six millimeters, roughly bottom bracket height up or down, chainstays also lengthen or shorten rough about six millimeters as well. Um, a shorter rear end is going to make the bike feel more playful, more lively and stable. Uh, it will allow you to manual the front of the bike, right? Because it, it's shifting the weight into a little bit more of a compact spot. A longer rear end is going to give you a longer wheelbase. So that will be helpful on very steep climbs. Um, you know, you think about motorcycle hill climbers, they've got those big long rear ends, you know, drag race motorcycles, big long rear ends. That helps keep that front end down, give more power and traction. Um, similarly, when you're descending, having a longer bike will make a more stable bike. Stability is kind of the opposite of nimbleness, right? So uh, 
that's again where if you are in a place where there's lots of tight rocks or roots you have to navigate between your maybe riding a slower speed stuff it could be steep and slow speed it doesn't have to be flat you know technical slow speed stuff like there could be very steep descents or climbs and actually having a shorter bike will allow you to navigate that terrain faster so um, that's kind of stuff that's worth considering having a shorter rear end um, especially on an e-bike can yield some very big benefits uh, to a point right especially with all the weight that an e-bike has uh, they're already stable just because of the weight right they give a planted ride but a shorter rear end will allow you to lift that front end and manual the bike a lot easier which is hard to do on a big heavy bike so sometimes when you get a you know a mountain bike or an e-bike with a super long rear end it might feel really great when you're going fast and attacking and planted on the ground but when you want to enter a corner and do something weird or awkward because there's an obstacle at the you know halfway or exit of a corner and you need to get that front end up a long bike a slack bike a low bike may not be your friend so here is the Levo Geometry Finder page. Um, as you can see, you can select what size bike you have and it will spit out numbers real time. If you, you know, feel like you're savvy enough and you kind of know where you want to be, you can just go directly to you know, steep and high. If you have no idea where to start, you can simply go to terrain and then you can pick steep, fast, variety, flatter with less obstacles. Um, if you like to pedal through rough and chunky stuff like I do, then you can go back here and it will say steep and high. Um, I personally like to be in this middle high position uh, as that's kind of my favorite. I feel like it does everything for a pretty good variety of trails. Um, and then you can see what numbers you've got. This is just a really cool feature that I think for advanced riders who are just curious and beginners as well, it's something that you know quite a few brands offer. I think this is a really nice, easily user-friendly experience and will help get you out on the trail and feel more comfortable with making the adjustments that we've talked about in the video. And again, don't forget guys, when you're looking at all these numbers, you can't just look at one and, and focus on that, right? They all work together to give that bike an entire experience. And you can't change one thing without changing something else elsewhere on the bike. Uh, so go out, play around, do some timed laps, you know, just, just get, pedal, have fun, make those adjustments and see what you guys notice on a trail that you're very familiar with. Hopefully you guys had some fun, learned a couple of things in this video. If you have any other tips, suggestions, or questions, we would love to answer them. Please ask them down below and we'd be happy to help. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you out on the trails.